You can now. Oh, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. I got a few minutes. I'm taking a break from working. Actually, I haven't been working that hard, but I'm still taking a break from thinking. <laughs> We are actually, I had to give my people the day off today because um, my wax just came in today. My wax just came in. But can we talk about the after breakup glow up? Can we talk about that? Because I just did a video. Hey, hey, hey. I am doing amazing. Doing amazing. Actually, I'm stressed the hell out, but I have just decided to, um, I grew up poor, like super, like dirt poor. And so I got bill collectors calling uh i got stressed from the, this damn business but i said you know what i ain't even gonna worry about it today so it is what it is now if y'all want to buy some candles we got buy two get one free on our southern sands and jubilee collection but uh i said i ain't even gonna worry about this shit yesterday i like yesterday i had a day from hell this is like totally irrelevant to the topic but um yesterday i had a day from hell like i woke up with my ex-husband calling me saying hey we need to talk about my son now not to put my son business out there but the motherfucker got kicked out of school so and he 12 so he home with me for the rest of the school year so my ex-husband was calling. He was like, hey, we need to talk about my son. So we were talking about the son. On the way to the car, my favorite purse, my favorite Tory Burch purse. Now, if you know Tory Burch, you know them purses are expensive. Strap broke. All my shit fell in the driveway. Then I get in the car, come to work. It's like problem after problem after problem. And then I said, Lord, have mercy. I, I was at work. I, it got to the point. I told my team, I said, y'all, I'm going home. I'm about to take to my bed. I did an old lady move. I acted like all of my 52 years. I said, I'm going home and I'm going to take to my bed. And I went home and I took a nap. I said, fuck this. Oh, let me stop cussing. Because, um... I did grow up poor. Please stop saying, baby, I was poor. I was dirt poor. Like, I'm I'm not saying it as a bad thing. I'm saying it, um, I'm saying it as, um, factual. Y'all hold on one second. Okay, sorry about that. But anyway, I did. I grew up for it. So, yes, so I was having like this horrible day. Horrible, 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 horrible day. And then I um went to, excuse me, ma'am, appeal is on the floor. <laughs> that, that video was funny. And so then my son had practice. I went to his practice. And I don't want to say too much about the practice. Practice was great for him. Like, he was having a good time. And a couple, and this was my first time taking him to practice. So I didn't know any of the parents there. And then I spoke to a couple of the, um, God, I don't want to say, let, let me see how I can say this story without it, without some, somebody calling me and then I have to cuss a motherfucker out. Um, a couple of the parents were less than friendly. I'll just say it like that. And this was my first time actually going to practice with my son. This was my first time being there. And so I was trying to be like extra nice because Normally, my ex-husband takes them to practice. And a couple of the female parents were less than nice. They were rude, as a matter of fact. And so, I was just like, man, this day, this day is horrible. This is a horrible-ass day. And so, then I was on my way home. And when I got home, m my neighbor, my neighbor that walks her dog was being attacked by a dog, by a German Shepherd. One of my neighbors, German Shepherd, got out. And, it's, and this lady is an old lady. Like, she's an old lady that walks her dog in my neighborhood because my neighborhood is a safe neighborhood. Um, and she was an old lady walking her dog, and one of the other neighbors' dog got out and attacked her and her dog. And so I was pulling up as all of the neighbors were trying to get the dogs apart, trying to get the, you know, hold the German Shepherd down and get it off the old lady. And I was pulling up, and I was in my SUV, and I was like, ma'am, do you want me to take you and your dog, like, away? from this situation i will take you home and then the police can meet you like at your house or down the street 
or you know around the corner or something just to get the lady and her dog out of that particular situation um and she was like no my dog is too old we can't put him in the car and me and the other dude was like no we will actually put your dog physically in my car and you get in the car we just want to get you away from this particular situation because the german shepherd was still you know kind of aggressive and so she was like no but she was bit up her dog was um injured she was injured and um I came home and I was like, you know, my day was horrible. I, I had a, I, I felt like I was having a bad day in the moment, but seeing that old lady be attacked by a dog, it just made me go, okay, my shit is bad. But like, there is this pales in comparison to the trauma that she is experiencing with her and her dog. You know what I'm saying? The ambulance had to come animal control came she was injured her dog was injured and so it just kind of put it in perspective okay i had a bad day of business i had some damn bill collectors like when you gonna send me my money but like in the big scheme of things how bad was my day not that damn bad but anyway but that so i think that sometimes we forget that you know, but I still say I had a bad day because my day in, in my world, my day was bad. It could have been worse. And I acknowledge that. But um, I, I, I seeing that old lady be attacked by a German Shepherd kind of put my shit in perspective and made me kind of go, OK, maybe maybe it is not as bad as I you know, thought. But anyway, I want to talk about the after breakup glow up. I want to talk about the after breakup glow up because my mutual, when she said, if a woman glows up after the breakup, dude, you were the problem. The dude was the problem. And I was like, man, if that ain't the damn truth. And then there's a video floating around of Waka Flocka. Like, I don't really follow Waka Flocka and Tammy. Like, I'm not even sure what show it is. Probably one of them love and hip hop type shows. I'm not even sure what it is. But um, he went to visit her and he was like, oh, I miss you. I miss the kid. I miss the dog. I miss the. And she was like, oh, I don't miss it. I do not miss it. And I was just thinking, man, when my ex left. And my mom sent me a message because I was posting on Facebook. Like, I hadn't really been posting on Facebook. But all of a sudden, I was posting on Facebook. I was glowing, like, going out, hanging with friends, doing all of this, like, amazing stuff. And she was like, why you look so happy? In 22 years of marriage, 22 years of marriage, nobody ever came to me and said, um, you look happy. Nobody ever came and said, you look happy. Not one person. And that just made me think, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. My family is amazing. Thank you, Ramon. But yeah, in 20 years of marriage, thank you. Thank you for the happy Mother's Day. In 20 years of being married, nobody ever came up to me and said, you look happy. Nobody. In two months of him leaving, everybody was commenting on how happy I look. In fact, people to this day, even on this app, will say you're glowing you look happy you i could be having the worst day i could be having the worst day like i ever thought that i was having and people will still say that i look happy and i would dare say that on my worst day right now i look happier less stressed than i was when i was married and i had no stress and stress is in air quotes like the things that stress me now like none of those things existed when i was married not one of them. You know what I'm saying? And basically, my day was, you know, go home and do regular married woman shit. And I had no idea that that regular married woman shit was so fucking stressful because you're culturally conditioned to think that that's what you're supposed to do. That's what you are supposed to endure. That's how it is supposed to be. All the while, his only responsibility is to go to work and come home. Whereas I'm going to work, coming home, cooking, cleaning, taking care of the finances, making sure we got good credit, picking my son up from daycare, entertaining my kid. And then I had the fucking nerve to start a whole fucking business on the side. So that meant I was working on the weekends doing shows and, and preparing product. His job was go to work and come home. That's all he had to do. Go to work and come home. 
and my, the rest of my time was still doing shit for other people how long do you think it'll take for me to get over a breakup okay to two years i'm sorry let me not minimize your pain I was with this man for 20 years. The key to getting over a breakup is to focus on yourself. The key to getting over a breakup is to focus on your, I mean, year two of grieving. Oh, baby. The, the key to getting over the breakup is to focus on yourself. You, the reason that you are sad is because you are focusing on what you had. And you are also trying to imagine the life that you would have had. See, this is the problem. You're trying to imagine what would have happened had we stayed together. And you're thinking it was going to be some magical life that now somehow you are missing out on because he's not with you. When the reality is your life would have been miserable because the motherfucker didn't want to be with you. And I'm not trying to be hard. I'm just saying that too many times women idealize the, the life that you thought that you were going to have. When the reality is you would have been fucking miserable. And I say this because I see this shit happen so many times that women want to hold on to the to the relationship for what? To say you had a man and he dogging you out and looking for his ideal woman because at this point you're not it. So when my ex-husband came home and said another woman made him happy, I said, baby, th there, there's no way that we can stay together. The way that I'm built, my mentality, knowing that you want somebody else, like there's no way we can stay together. There, there's no happiness that's going to be had in this relationship because you don't want me. So you're still sitting home thinking somehow or another you lost something. That you don't have something. That somehow or another your life would be totally different if this man was in it. And it would be better than what you are capable of creating on your own. So the moment you figure out that you can create a better life for yourself without him in it, you will get past all of that hurt and grief. That's just pretty much what it is. You're living in a fantasy world. That is based on the past because you're saying, oh, I gave him this. I did this. I did that. And you feel entitled to something. You feel entitled to a life right now that you don't have. So the moment you let go of that entitlement that you of this fantasy life, why did he say he didn't want you? I don't know. I ain't asked. Y'all need to go back and watch some of my videos. I don't know what the fuck happened. He said he didn't want to be with me. I said, fucking fine. Please leave. Like, I'm not begging a man to stay with me. If you tell me you don't want me, you don't want to be my friend. Okay, we're not friends. I don't want to be in a relationship with you. Okay, you got to go. I don't want to be married to you. We don't have to be married. Like, I'm not trying to pick through, like, what is wrong? You're too fat. Oh, I'm going to eat a salad. No, the fuck I'm not. I'm not eating a goddamn salad for a man to... to, to to try to get him to like me. I'm fat. You don't like fat women. Goodbye. We're not dissecting that. You're too loud. Well, I'm not going to be quiet. So you need to go. I I don't know. You, you, oh, you're too old for me now. I, I want a younger woman. I'm not, I can't unage. So the conversation, that closure that y'all are looking for, it does not matter. Why did he not like me? The fuck if I know. The same way I meet random dudes on the street and they be like, you not my type. I just be like, shit, okay. Get, don't fucking talk to me. See, the thing is, when I, meet a, when I meet a man on the street and he tell me I'm not his type, I don't have no fucking conversation with him anymore. There's nothing to talk about. You're not about to destroy my self-esteem because and pick apart all that is me because you don't like it the, but a lot of y'all do that shit with your boyfriends and husbands the motherfucker be like i don't like you no more and then pick apart all the shit that he don't like about you and then you sitting somewhere crying trying to figure out if you good enough you good enough but not for this motherfucker so you just need to just break up and move on with your life and find somebody that likes you 
So that, you know, I'm sorry, but I'm not like the person that's going to tell you to stay. I don't miss the comments because I went off on a damn t uh, tangent. Now, let me go back and see what y'all were saying. Never stay where you're not wanted. That's the truth. All of this is true. Hard to let go of what you conceptually created for your future. That is really what the problem is. And so I said, am I talking to you? The why does not matter. That is right. So... What matters is he don't want you. I remember one time I called my sister and I was like, I need closure. I need to know what the hell happened. She said, you got all the closure you needed when he started treating you poorly. Bitch, what? I will never ask for closure again in life. I will never ask for closure. You treat me poorly. That is the closure that I needed. She said, you got all the closure you needed when he started treating you poorly. And baby, let me tell you something. That has been the closure in my life from this point forward. If I'm talking to somebody and they start talking slick to me, closure. That's all the closure I need. Baby, We, I will never talk to you again in life. I'm talking to a man. He say something slick to me, closure. Baby, you blocked through Verizon. I'm here at my job right now. Everybody off work. I tell a motherfucker to do something and I sign they check. They say some slick shit to me. Closure, baby. You ain't got to work here. Like the closure that I need is all about how you show up for me. I don't need no words. Them actions provide all the closure I need. I don't need to know why. Why? Why? What? Baby, why am I not talking to you? Why am I cutting you out of my life? Why is your ass blocked through Verizon? That's the why, because what I will not do is be sitting around wondering why you don't like me. I just made a TikTok about, oh, I almost said that real fucking name. Let me calm down. Um, I, I made a TikTok about a, 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 some people in my social circle. And um, the dude's wife don't like me. And he was like, I think y'all should talk. I said, listen, I've never said anything disrespectful. I've never done anything out of the way to her. She has absolutely no reason to dislike me and be openly hostile towards me. I will never talk to her. I will never have a conversation with her. Words coming out of my mouth to her, to your wife, will never happen. I will continue to be pleasant to you, but I will never say anything to her. Not even hello. I got all the closure I need. I ain't do shit. And you want to be a bitch? Shit. I, we don't have to talk. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. Closure. 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 So, I'm just telling you. And she don't need to get nothing off. Um, girl, I dated a narc. And, and that was, I, I certifiable. See, some of y'all be like, I dated a narc. And y'all just don't like how he was because he was a selfish motherfucker. Just because he's selfish don't mean he's narciss He's a narc. Okay? He's a narcissist. There are two different things. I dated a narcissist that had papers from his psychiatrist, psychologist. I don't even know. His job made him go get fucking therapy. So he was a certified, got the papers, the, the narcissist. Okay? And that relationship taught me a lot. Taught me to get the hell on. Taught me that it wasn't me. It's, it, it is amazing to me how women will be with a narcissist and then leave the relationship and still internalize the shit that the narcissist said when they know that he has a mental condition. If I, When I broke up with him and I was like, oh, that motherfucker was crazy. So anything that he said don't matter. So I just worked on building me back up because if I heard his voice in my, in my head, I'd be like, oh, that motherfucker crazy. Like, let me not let, let me not internalize anything that he ever said or did, because when I got out of it and could look back on it, I'd be like, what the hell was I thinking to put up with that bullshit? Shit, I was a little crazy to deal with him. Maybe that's why my cutoff game is so strong now. I'm telling you, y'all, I, I, I'm built different <laughs> because when I look back on shit, I'd I be like, mm, this motherfucker crap. block, block through Verizon. I had to go to therapy uh after mine because he told me 
He got me thinking I was crazy. Yeah, but see me, I'm crazy enough to go. I won't crazy. He was crazy. I'm probably a little bit crazy and still think that the other motherfucker is crazy. I will do some crazy shit and be mad at you that you don't understand the crazy shit that I'm doing. That's how crazy I am. So I'm built a little bit different. So a lot of y'all kind of internalize a lot of stuff on the outside world. You are looking for external validation from people. And I don't give a fuck. Like, I do not care if you like me or not. I don't care if you like what I got to say. I don't care if you like how I dress, how I wear my hair. Um, somebody was like, why you always got makeup on TikTok? I said, because it's my goddamn channel. And if you don't like it, block me. Like, I tell people to, I actively tell people to block me. Because if you don't want to see this, I'm not going to change. I don't care about your opinion. None of that shit matters to me. It's a billion people on this app. Find the motherfuckers that like you. So, but that's my attitude to everything. Because you're girly girly. Who's girly girly? Y'all, not me. You must ain't seen. Um, <laughs> you ain't seen my tics. Ain't nothing girly girly about me. So, I'm just saying. But they'll, but people will come on here and say the most asinine thing. Oh, I was, yeah, I was responding to a comment above where somebody said they dated a narcissist. My ex-husband was not a narcissist. In fact, he was a great guy the vast majority of the time that we were married. He lost his mind for a hot second. And I was like, oh, eyes free? Girl, it's like being a caged bird. Like, you all right. You flirting around in the cage. You don't really know. You know, you kind of like, uh, this is the shit. I guess this is it. And then the motherfucker leave the door open. And you fly out. And you get a taste of freedom. You be like, what is this? And you looking around. And they trees and wind and shit. You all outside all of a sudden. And then the motherfucker be like, come on, bitch. Fuck you. I come back to that cage. Now, get somebody else to do it. Get somebody else to do it. Like, that's how I felt when I got out of that marriage. So, the fact that y'all be... Yeah, I am not answering that phone. Because some people got questions about their order. And I'm the only one here. So, they're going to have to wait till tomorrow. She's going to have to leave a message. I'll call her back tomorrow. Oh, it's a wireless call. Yeah, I'm not answering that. But I'm saying, some of y'all get free. Y'all get out of that cage. And then the motherfucker be like, come back. And then you... get. Right back into the cage. I don't know what they're talking. They leaving a message. I'll call them back later. Y'all go right back to that cage and then be sad. And then the the, the 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 rest of us free. We out on a branch somewhere, looking in through the window at your dumb ass because you went right back to being caged up. No, nah, baby, you. I mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. get somebody else to do it. I get somebody else to do it. First time that cage door opened, I said, I am getting the fuck up out of here. And I was out. And I ain't never looked back. Mm -mm. I was not suffering from Stockholm Syndrome like that. Like, I was like, I, I love my captor. But the moment I got free, I was not going back, baby. Uh -uh. I'm out. I don't love you like that. I ain't ever going back. And I know my ex. And see, the thing is, he thought that being... Uh, he thought that being, see, this is the thing. You got the internet and then you got the real world. So on the internet, men are everywhere. No, women are everywhere. You got women everywhere. And women just everywhere. All you got to do is just go out into the real world. You're going to get a woman. That, that's how men think, right? And women are on this app saying, oh, there's only three men out in the world there's only three i'm never gonna find another one so men are on this app talking reckless and women are on this app listening to the bullshit and then you got the real motherfucking world women are everywhere men are everywhere it's just motherfuckers everywhere that's it and so when you go out into the real world all of a sudden you find i free now and i got all these other birds to choose from. I got black birds, blue birds, red birds. I got robins. The whole time I'm in the cage, they're saying, you know, 
You just a parrot and don't nobody want you. Actually, they're not even giving you the benefit of being a parrot. They like you a damn buzzard or some bullshit. And so you just thinking that you this little thing and don't nobody want you and you just need to be happy that you're in the cage and with the little seed air now and then they give you a fucking sunflower seed and you're supposed to be happy with the bullshit. And then you get out in the real world and you eating goddamn, I don't know what birds eat. Whatever the fuck birds eat, you eating all of that shit, worms and birds and goddamn bird, I don't know, whatever the fuck they eat. And then it's robins and goddamn buzzards and oh y'all i gotta get off gotta get off gotta get off but anyway y'all have a wonderful 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 that's right eagles and shit uh y'all have a wonderful day i got i gotta get off of here i got some work i gotta do have a great day